Hello, in this video we are going to highlight how LiveActions LiveNX software can be used for the practical monitoring of a Cisco IWAN environment. The first place to go in LiveNX is the WAN dashboard. This dashboard is your portal to all things IWAN. There's actually two views on this dashboard. There's a dashboard view as well as a performance view. Each view allows you to see different aspects of the IWAN environment and quickly understand the performance of the environment at a glance. Both views also allow you to focus the scope of the view by site as well as by time. Let's begin by discussing the performance view of the WAN dashboard. The performance view will show delay, jitter, and loss statistics of IWAN. These stats are continuously being gathered via PFR log data. PFR will generate log information, send it to LiveNX, and it sends it as NetFlow. It's a special NetFlow template. In turn, LiveNX will capture that data and report it as appropriate. Do note that if you see data missing from the performance view, it is likely that you will need to go to the border routers that are missing and do a shut, no shut on the domain process of the border. Now each widget in the performance view is something that you can double click and drill down into. Both the widget headers as well as the bar graphs within the widgets allow you to drill down into applicable historic reports. If you drill down into the widgets header, if you will, it will be a very generic report and if you drill down into a bar graph, a search will be auto-populated to focus in on whatever it was that you drilled down from. Next, let's discuss the dashboard view. The dashboard view has two primary purposes. One, it's to highlight any TCA alerts that may be happening in the environment. It also highlights the utilization of the IOAN environment. This dashboard breaks down these concepts by site, by application group, as well as by service provider. The alert widgets of the dashboard are collected via PFR flow data, and the utilization and bandwidth statistics are collected via traditional basic NetFlow. At the top of the dashboard, you will see the all alerts and top 10 alerts by site pair widgets. These widgets will give you an overall view of the TCAs being seen in the environment. Remember, a TCA is a threshold crossing alert. This is when the PFR mechanism running on the Cisco routers detects a performance issue, and oftentimes there's a route path change that corresponds with that alert. Both of these widgets allow you to drill down, and the applicable historic report will be shown when you double click on either the widget header or one of the bar graphs within the widget itself. Across the left side of the dashboard, you will see a breakdown of TCAs by site, by application group, as well as by service provider. Let's unpack what this specific slide shows because it's great for quickly understanding what's happening in a IWAN environment. So this top widget, the site widget, is showing me that the TCAs, specifically loss-based TCAs, are happening at Los Angeles. The next widget, the application group widget, shows me that voice video as well as critical data are where the loss is occurring. And then finally, the service provider widget shows me that the loss is happening on the MPLS network. So very quickly, I can understand that Los Angeles is having loss on the MPLS circuit, and it's affecting both voice video and critical data. IWAN bandwidth utilization is also available by site, by application group, as well as by service provider. As we've mentioned before, each one of these widgets allow you to drill down into applicable historic reports. Of the three categories, site, application group, and service provider, each category is going to have two widgets. They will show a perspective of the alternate view. So for example, the site widgets are going to have a breakdown by application group as well as by service provider. The application group widgets are going to have a breakdown by site and service provider. And then finally, the service provider widget is going to have a breakdown by application group as well as by site. A practical way to utilize the dashboard and quickly understand the performance of the WAN would be this. First, you would select the WAN dashboard. Next, 
at the very top right of the dashboard, you would want to make sure that the tick box for enable SD-WAN control is in place, that filter's in place, that's in place by default and will be ticked by default. Also, you would want to implement either all sites or a specific site of interest to focus the scope of the dashboard. Next, I will typically then look at the application group bandwidth by service provider widget. What this widget allows you to do is quickly break down the types of traffic on the network over time, and I can then see what is the type of traffic witnessed as well as what service provider is that traffic riding on. So in this example, scavenger traffic has always been on the INET path. Default traffic looks like it's almost always been on INET. Critical traffic and then voice traffic have been on both paths. And what this indicates is that PFR is doing its job. It's experiencing TCAs, which is causing route changes, and then dynamically redirecting my voice and critical data to the alternate path as appropriate per the PFR policy running at the iOS level. Now, if you were to drill down on, say, the voice bar graph, that will open up the corresponding historic report. And this report will very quickly highlight when did that route change occur. Another key feature of Live NX is the ability to visualize traffic across the topology diagram. What we're seeing in this example would be let's imagine voice traffic riding the MPLS network before a PFR event or TCAs were seen in the environment and corresponding route changes happened. And then afterwards, we can see that the pathing of our voice has taken an alternate, potentially INET path. And with this topology view, it makes it so quick and so easy to validate that pathing is performing as desired in the environment. Another view that's now available is in the Live NX web interface, there is a site-to-site -site story. The site-to-site -site story provides a chord diagram, and this chord diagram allows you to drill down into more specific site-to-site -site communication and then be presented with a Sankey diagram, and let's unpack these. So the chord diagram, as mentioned, provides site-to-site -site bandwidth and utilization information. This can be viewed in both the inbound as well as outbound direction. And any one of the chords that you see on this diagram, you can hover your mouse over them, double click on the cord, and when you double click, it's going to drill down into a Sankey diagram. This is a very powerful report or view that shows you the applications between those two sites selected. The DSCP markers on those types of traffic, the service provider that that traffic is riding on, and then finally, what is the performance state of that traffic. Next, I want to highlight how we can view this diagram with different time periods, whether 15 minutes, hour, four hours, day, week, etc. You can also have this diagram auto update. You can focus the view to just specific applications of interest. In this example, I've focused on just RTP traffic or voice traffic. And what I see here is that for the period of time, in this case, the last hour, my voice traffic has always been marked is the DSCP value of EF. It has ridden both service provider paths and it has been seen with a critical performance indication. Another great piece to the Sankey diagram is the ability to replay this data. So at the bottom left of the window is a play button, and when you play uh, back the traffic, you're going to see the time bar scroll across the screen. And what you'll be able to see, say for our voice traffic, is our voice traffic start out on the MPLS network, over time, it then flipped from MPLS to INAT1, and then finally it ended up on just INAT1's path. Finally, on the Sankey diagram, each of the areas highlighted on this screen are places where you can double click, and the applicable historic report will be shown. When you drill down into these various elements on the Sankey diagram, they're actually going to be very advanced reports that have multiple data sets across the page. The examples that I show in this slide are very simple. Uh, there's actually multiple reports that can be opened and multiple options within them. So definitely check out all of those various features. Next, let's discuss the IWAN reports themselves. There are two types of IWAN reports. There are WAN flow reports, and there are also PFR flow reports. 
the WAN flow reports are based off of basic flow, so just regular old net flow. These reports show the bandwidth utilization by application group, by site, as well as by service provider. Since these are based off of regular old basic net flow, all the search capabilities available in live action can be applied here. Now the PFR flow reports are based off of PFR flow data. Again, PFR flow data is PFR log information being delivered to live action via NetFlow. The PFR flow data contains alerts as well as performance data. And since this is a special NetFlow template, only a subset of the search capabilities of live action are available. These are very key searches though. So you can search by service provider, by site, flow.ip.site.destination, flow.ip.site.source, as well as flow.dscp. This will be a very powerful set of searches for you. Now, let's unpack the WAN reports. There are three different types of WAN reports. Application group reports, site capacity reports, and service provider reports. Let's break down the application group reports. There are three of them. And what the difference is in, in each of these three reports is they show you different perspectives of the bandwidth based off application group. So the application group bandwidth reports is just going to show you the generic bandwidth by application group. Application bandwidth by site is going to break down the application groups as well as the sites and you'll be able to see the volume of data per site. And then finally application group bandwidth by service provider is going to break down the application groups by service provider and you can break down the bandwidth as appropriate. Remember that all search criteria are available with the WAN reports such as the application group bandwidth reports like we're looking at here. So let's unpack and give a very brief example of why that search capability is so powerful. So if you were to run a application group bandwidth by service provider report with no filtering or no search in place, you're going to see generically all of the application groups and the respective service providers are writing on. But if you're more specific and apply a search, you can narrow your scope to a very specific set of data. In this specific slide, what I'm showing is a typical search whereby one would look at traffic for a specific site. Of course, we would typically want to hide PFR smart probe information. And in turn, we're looking at just DSCP EF or 46. And what this is showing us is just one specific type of conversation from one specific site. And the color coding we're seeing in this specific report is highlighting that my voice has flipped paths. It's flipped from the INAP path in orange over to the MPLS path and then back to the INAP path. And we can understand over time when those path changes occurred. Next, the WAN site capacity utilization reports. It's all the same concept. There is a site capacity utilization that's going to generically break down the overall utilization based off site. Site capacity utilization by app group breaks down the site utilization by app group. And then finally, site capacity utilization by service provider breaks down the concept of sites by the service provider. And again, all search criteria are here. So just like our previous example, you can be very specific and pinpoint just the data that you want to see. And by having different reporting options, you can look at it from different points of view, if you will. Next, there's also the WAN service provider bandwidth reports. And just like the others, there's a generic service provider bandwidth report. There is a service provider by application group report and then finally service provider bandwidth by site. And it breaks down that story as appropriate, just like the others. Next, let's pick apart the PFR reports. So there's two groups of PFR reports. There's the PFR alert reports, as well as the PFR performance reports. And remember, the PFR reports are based off of PFR flow data, so only a subset of search capabilities are available. For PFR alerts, there are five different reports. Alerts by site, by service provider, all alerts, alerts by application group, as well as by site pair. And so you can pivot and look at 
these different data sets from different perspectives. What's key about the five different PFR alert report types is I mentioned you can break down those alerts from different perspectives and by doing so you can then have a very granular view of where are alerts occurring, uh, what types of traffic are involved, what service providers are those alerts happening on, and when you utilize the search capability of LiveNX, that's where the power of these reports really come to play because you can understand with very granular perspectives exactly where are alerts coming from, what type of alerts are they, what service providers are being affected, what types of applications are being affected, etc. Next, let's talk about the PFR performance reports. There are three PFR performance reports, and again, since these are based off PFR flow data, only a subset of the search capabilities are available. The same concepts as we've just reviewed are all available here. Uh, there's a performance by site report, performance by application group, as well as performance by service provider report. And what matters about these is when you look at the performance data, LiveNX is continuously capturing and learning jitter, loss, and delay measurements. And by being able to use these different reports and the different search capabilities, you can really focus in and understand the health of the WAN environment. It's a really powerful thing that PFR is continuously measuring and reporting back to live action, the health of each channel or each VPN of the environment. It's very, very powerful. Next, let's talk about a couple troubleshooting items. One is when you first set up your PFR or IWAN environment and you enable live action and begin looking at the dashboard, if you see lots of unreachable alerts, most likely this is caused by one of two things. It's caused by either bad iOS and you may want to upgrade your iOS version in accordance to Cisco recommendation. Also another reason to see unreachable alerts is because there may be a PFR configuration issue. Oftentimes it seems to have to do with the prefix list that will control PFR interesting traffic. Either way, if you see lots of unreachable events, we would recommend reaching out to Cisco TAC for next step troubleshooting. Another key item is this. If you see data missing from the PFR performance reports or from the PFR performance dashboard view, that means that the PFR border routers are not sending the appropriate data to live action. And what we found is if you will do a shut, no shut on the PFR border process at each BR that's not sending its applicable data, that will kickstart that router, if you will, to then start sending all of the PFR log data that Live Action can then take advantage of. This concludes part one of our PFR practical reporting video. Please look for part two where we will dive into the LiveNX client and show practical examples of this material.